about it um, before, and I think you brought to the board that we are not the organization to be putting this on. Right, we're, so not, we, we're not a promoter. We're not a promoter, right. and this is not the closest that we wanted, and we have yep. so much time to pay. Yep. And now we are actually pulling it together. We, so we change the scope. It's a, we're curating what's already happening here. So in other words, um, you know, similar to uh, Dying LA or the Fringe Fest where you say, tell us what you have going on. Every venue in Hollywood, Hotel Cafe, Record Parlor, Amoeba, you know, St. Felix, uh, Fonda or whatever, and we will assemble it and promote it. So we don't have to organize anything. We don't have to purchase it. We're, gonna, we're going to curate what's already happening and celebrate the organic kind of experience. And that's what, you know, we, so we need to kind of start with what we already have and mm -hmm. celebrate who's already here. Like um, Amoeba. Amoeba is just a wonderful example. They already have um, events twice a week where they have wonderful, very hip um, band, you know, bands. Mm -hmm. So they would, choose, they would have an event on their quarters, we don't have to do anything. We're just publicizing it. Right. So we can publicize it within our existing communication structure. So it's really a public, publicity event. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's what's already here. You're it's just pack, uh, you're yeah, packing. Pack, right. Pack, we're setting dates and inviting the community yeah. to participate. And theoretically, the, the amigas of the world will, will try to get their best yeah. talent on all in that one. Yeah, and Amiga is period. one of the central working groups. They're terrific, and they are very excited. And we may actually do, um, <coughs> yeah, they, they'll be helpful. They're at every meeting. Um, terrific. Uh, now, can you hear me? It's Michael. Yes. 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 Are you there? Hi. Uh, I mean, my guess is it's going to be a lot more work than you think, just listening to what, what you guys are thinking. And it's, you know, it's a little different from you know what we had originally talked about. And it could be a nice community event. It could be really nice, but it's not the music festival we were originally talked about, which was going to bring the Hollywood branding to the world and really extend to something different and special. So, you know, we should just be aware of that. And I think that at least my initial thinking was let's get ahead of it because someday a promoter is going to come in because it's so obvious and they're going to put together a music festival and we won't be involved. Let's get ahead of it, bring someone in who can really put these together. And I spoke to a couple of people and said, that it's no big deal for us. It's a big deal, it's a lot of work. We don't know what we're doing. For the promoters, it's no big deal. But to involve ourselves from day one so that it has to be good for the community. Otherwise, we won't support it. We can hopefully, you know, maybe delay it. And we want something that's really gonna benefit the community, including maybe dollars coming back to the bid, <coughs> which then we can circulate back into, you know, extra security or cleaning or whatever it is that would benefit the neighborhood. So, so that was my thinking. And, you know, originally I spoke to a couple of guys who thought, you know, we could do an unbelievable event that could only take place in Hollywood. You know, we have Jimmy Kimmel anchoring one side of the boulevard, Capitol Records on the other. And I mentioned to the committee, I spoke to the chair, chairman of Capitol, and was very supportive. You know, that would be something special. This is much more low key, which is fine, but it's just not what we originally envisioned. And it still sounds like a lot of work, by the way. Yeah. I like that. You know, I think, Michael, we, we certainly tried to chase the big item last year, and we got tied up with, you know, where does the money come from, and a lot of logistical and control issues. So, well, we didn't. We didn't. It was the it was the you know, hotel cafe guys who, you know, I never, you know, very nice guys, and they had never done a music festival. It just illustrates how difficult it is, and they know a thousand times more than I do about putting together uh, entertainment. So it's it's not, it's not that easy. Um, but they're both to do it very easily, and it's complicated because there are noise festivals you compete competing against, the talent is pretty well booked throughout the year. And, um, you know, I just, I just think it's going to be a lot of work, no matter what. And Michael, from what you're, you're referencing that might pull this off, are they the Nederlanders or Live Nations or Golden Voices of the World, or are they a different build? I'm sorry, Johnny, are you talking to me? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I've spoken to a couple of people who you wouldn't have heard of. Okay. There. I mean, there's one guy I've become quite friendly with who I actually trust and he's totally, Get the concept I was talking 
bring them about that is happening in the community. And um, yeah, but but I, you know, there are probably five people we could interview and talk to and get ideas from. I just think that we shouldn't give up just because the, the hotel cafe guys didn't pull it off. And by the way, we may go through this process and decide, you know what, it really is a bad idea. It's bad for the community. They make some treaty issues. It's unwieldy. It just doesn't work. But at least let's make that decision after talking to a real expert. And and you know, we have David Green on the board. We can speak to the leader. We can speak to some of the bigger companies. We can get feedback. I also would prefer to stay away from the giant corporation and have it as organic and low key as possible. But you know, it's, it's, I still think we should try to do something special that reflects what what Hollywood represents to the world. Well, I think we that is what we want to do. Um, we want to just start out knowing that we can manage this. But um, when we talked with Haynes and Co. yesterday, they had some really, really fantastic ideas about this um, that we're going to bring to the, the working group next uh, on April 2nd. And it's all, you know, depending on the buy-in from the partners, the different venues here in, in Hollywood, you know, if Capital and Jimmy Kimmel wanted to participate and make a big bang, that's something that they can certainly do, and we hope that they would see the value in partnering with us. But it doesn't put the bid in a place where we're going to be liable for a whole bunch of money that we might, may or may not make back. Right, right. No, I don't think the bid should ever be in a position of being uh, responsible financially for any of this. And you know what, I think maybe the, uh, we shouldn't even call it a music festival. It all should be, we're going to curate all the good things happening in Hollywood on a four night uh, schedule in November. Uh, create a map of how people could walk from place to place, places they could eat, have libations, uh, how to make it easier to park, how to get here easily, a celebration of four nights in Hollywood. And so semantically, for us to get, you know, kind of like everyone's got a different image of what a music festival is, this in a sense would be a festival celebrating good, good things in Hollywood. And we have experience now for three years doing Sunset and Dine. We have a kind of a, an event planner um, here with Devin who's kind of amazing. And this is one of those things that I think we, the committee, you know, we've got a number of people involved with this committee, Amoeba, uh, um, Beth Marlis with uh, Musicians Institute, St. Felix, Jan, um, Record Parlor, you know, a lot of excitement about celebrating these four nights in Hollywood. So let us, you know, continue to brainstorm this with the, with the working group and the marketing group and come back with a name that maybe calls it something different <laughs> than a music festival. So it's a good idea, Carrie. It sounds like a really, it could be a really nice community event. Yeah. But we don't want it to uh, foreclose the possibility of a real music festival later yeah. on. Yeah. And the plan is like that concept and that, that brand name. Mike, um, Michael, this is Mark. I agree with you um, on that. The, the only uh, thing I, I want to throw out as well is, is that if you're going to celebrate Hollywood, you need to make sure that it's something that you're doing that's different. It's, uh, it, it's great that we can at least celebrate Hollywood, but if we don't do anything different, and I know everybody's going to hate me saying, close some of the roads, but we need to be able to make sure that it's a different vibe uh, 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 that is al allowing us to celebrate instead of it just being the same old, same old, because, you know, you can just say, hey, the restaurants are great, and hey, we got some music down over here in Avalon, we got this and that. Well, it's, nothing's different. What's different? So if we, we can't figure that out, then it's just saying, well, come by and, you know, enjoy Halloween. So. I, I actually have a question. Um, I'm, I don't know who, who's like the target demographic that we're looking to attract to Hollywood because especially after Saturday night, um, what we saw is the demographic that was coming out in Hollywood. I'm not sure that that is the goal of who you want packaging uh, Saturday night in Hollywood to. Um, so I just didn't know if you had looked into that. And also, Echo Park does, uh, they use Sunset and they have two mm -hmm. music festivals that happen. I, I don't know if they're actually music festivals. One is a music festival, and one is like kind of a celebration of the neighborhood, and all the venues open up, and people, everyone's on the street. It's really high activity. Um, and also, there is FYF Fest, which has just become a, they started at Echo Park taking over all the venues and using them. So, I didn't know if they're looking into um, those models that seem to kind of work for a bit of time and bring out a, a nice crowd. Yeah, that's great. 
and Michael, I think we're, we would love Jimmy Kimmel and Capital, and we, so doors are open to all ideas and to everything. I think the um, working group is focusing on what could we do that would celebrate authentically Hollywood in just a few months. So it's a baby step. Yep. yep. The only other thing yeah, that I, I don't I don't think we could put together the set anyway to put together a real music festival in a few months anyway. So no. no. I agree. Yeah. So one does not negate the other at right. all. In fact, the success of this could give us momentum to really plan something and, and confidence. Or to find that um, to find that person or people who would promote um, something that we're confident with. Because I would I, I would also propose that it's not uh, it's not just music here, Hollywood, but we're talking the marriage of, you know, look at the $4 billion of new construction, it's technology companies, it's entertainment and film industry. So I think, I love the idea of thinking this through, but I think it's a very, it's really big, it shouldn't just be music. Like we have Capitol Records, we have, mm -hmm. you know, the theaters here, we've got some of those incredible venues in the, in the United States right here. So, you know, if there's a thinking group, I think you guys are doing a great, Great job, but you're starting off with a baby step and let's do it locally. It's something we can do. We don't have liability associated with it, so that's the first step. But um, I'd be, I'd love to be on, join this group to try April to push something second. bigger. Okay, okay. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Anything we can do with positive messages in Hollywood will be great. Because the, the, you know, the original concept, if you recall, was really, you know, there was this negative messaging, constant, constant hammering, crime, and shooting, and <coughs> To really turn it around and have a positive message. <coughs> totally, totally. It's all about that premise we talked about changing the conversation of Hollywood and making it, you know, really sharing with people there's so much that's wonderful here <coughs> and unique, as you were saying, technology, all those things. So we want to share that. I'm going to toss out something because mm -hmm. I, I would love to come to that meeting, but I'm not going to be here. Okay. Um, I know that Golden Voice is my tenant. They schedule way in advance, so mm -hmm. they've probably got those dates already booked, but maybe not. So there might, maybe there'll be a couple of shows that they've already got booked, and maybe there'll be a, a, one of the days will be free, in which case you could schedule a special event upon them that could be related. Uh, to this whole thing and maybe a place for people to gather. Um, mm -hmm. So I need to write down the dates and actually look on the calendar and I'll bring it back to you. Yeah. <coughs> to the 8th of November. Okay. Uh, but I would imagine this would go for other theaters too. Oh, definitely. Nice. Yeah. Any other comments? I would just say, uh, if we are going to tie our name to it, even if it is at the curator level, do we carry any legal liability with anything that goes wrong during the event? I think just like yeah, the dining at the restaurant. Yeah, we could definitely. Yeah, it might be like an event policy or something like that, which is a yeah, definitely. Okay. No, we're not going to add it. I don't think so. It's just for Okay, and then I need to. Yeah, just uh, let you know a couple months ago. Should we ask for a few more? Not going to change. I can do that. I don't think so. I don't think so. I so just uh, a couple months ago, we brought before you BizNow, which is a, a for-profit real estate company that uses events across the city, they've done the state of Los Angeles, uh, they went to last year, they did one in Culver City, and they look at basically emerging real estate markets and do these events to kind of help promote them and put them on the map. Uh, they reached out to us last year, they knew Hollywood was up and coming, they wanted to do something, um, and they finally have set a date. Uh, it's going to be, they're going to have an event in Hollywood on April 29th. There's an impromptu flyer that I created. It's basically a snapshot of their webpage and your 
Pat, and we actually had made a motion a couple months ago to help sponsor this. Um, we are co-sponsoring it with the Sunset Vine bid, so it's only $1,500 out of our pocket and $1,500 out of the Sunset Vine bid pocket. And what that allows us with that sponsorship to do is um, be a part of the program. Carrie will be the, our very own Carrie Morrison will be the keynote speaker uh, opening up the event. Um, they'll have two panels, one on the residential side and of course on our, our booming office market. They'll have another panel on the development occurring there. And uh, the event is, as I said, it's going to be Wednesday, April 29th. It's going to be at, right here in the W. Um, tickets are $79. Early bird pricing stops on March 23rd, Monday. And um, it starts at 9 a.m. There's a continental breakfast at 8 a.m. And just, uh, it's a really great event. Uh, I spoke with the organizers on um, Monday. Ticket sales are in their first week are going very well. Um, they're anticipating anywhere from 300 to 400 guests um, here in Hollywood. And um, we'll also have a table there where Devin and I, and probably Matthew as well, will be handing out some of our infographics and other data to, um, to the attendees. So just want to put it on your radar, I'll let you know that we're still a part of this. It's actually happening now. As I said, for a long time, they're trying to find a date and they've said it. So. Hope to see many of you there. And I think actually, as part of our sponsorship, I'm trying to follow up on this, we actually get a number of, of free tickets as well. So if there's any board members that really, really, really want to go, please let us know when we first come first. So we can get you. Hey, Joe, are they going to share a list of the attendees? Um, yes, you can actually, as, as part of your ticket, I believe you can. And I know in the past that they've offered that, yes. I'll double check on that, though. I mean, just as a sponsor, they should probably share a list. It'd be useful to argue, uh, I'm sure, to see who's interested in Hollywood. You know, maybe we can learn something from it. Yep. Yeah, great. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Um, we're running a little late, so I'll, I'll spare you on the usual report on our. We, we met this month. No major tragedies to announce um, <laughs> uh, and uh, and so let's move on to a uh, discussion of the uh, street vending ordinance. Sure. Sorry, would you like to take yeah. the lead? Carrie, you want me to start that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right here. okay, so this is a one-pager for you guys on the street vending ordinance and I'm also here with Jessica from Monterey Strategies and yeah. Yeah. Um, so what we're trying to do right now, for a lot of you knew me when I worked for Council Member O'Farrell, and now I'm working over at Suffolk City Association, and we are a business advocacy group um, in downtown Los Angeles, and we're focused on the issue of street vending right now. Um, there's currently a proposal before the city council that would legalize street vending. Um, <coughs> there's a couple of problems with the proposal. One, it doesn't have any limits on this, so street vending could happen in any neighborhood, anywhere. Um, two, there's no limits on what kind of goods could be sold. So they, anything could be sold from food to merchandise. Snakes. Um, yeah, it's, it's a little loose. Um, the other huge problem with it is the fees associated with it are so low that they wouldn't pay for any enforcement. So we have this unwieldy program um, kind of taking over our streets. And I think you guys know in Hollywood, our streets already have a lot of issues. Um, a lot of that has to do with and you know our homeless issues related to that. So we are organizing small businesses, all the bids across the city, and asking them to take a position of opposition against the proposal. Um, and we have retained Rodriguez strategies to help us do that um, because CCA can't do that work all across the city. And so we're here tonight to talk to you about it, answer questions, and then also do some organizing. So, Leah and I are going to be leading the grassroots outreach and organizing for this. I mean, it's not a campaign, but we're going to be running it like a campaign. Um, we're going to set up a canvas in most of the city council districts, including um, Mitchell Farrell's, and we're going to go door to door, business to business, just to hand out fact sheets, let them know about the proposal, how it would impact the business community, the residential communities in these different areas. We do have a sign-up sheet um, tonight if anyone is interested um, in just signing up to oppose the measure as it stands, which is the blanket legalization. Um, like Marie said, not enough money to enforce it. So
so there will be there, there will be compliance issues. Um, and again, if you have any relationships within this area of folks that are impacted or would be impacted by the legislation <coughs> of street vending, we'd be interested in taking a separate trip out to just talk to them one on one, see if maybe they would be interested in sharing their story with either the council member or um, with us for use in earned media and additional outreach. I would venture to say virtually every one of the all the property owners mm -hmm. tell you stories about the negative impact mm -hmm. of street vending. The sidewalks are not big enough mm -hmm. in Hollywood, especially when, mm -hmm. when it gets, there's an event going on to have you know people pushing things around, selling things. And, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it's an ADA issue. I think it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a public health issue, certainly, when they're cooking hot dogs on those things. Yeah, and where does the water and the trash go? Yeah, and, and, yeah. It, and a lot of times they'll <laughs> set up camp right in front of, you know, retail establishments, mm -hmm. and, and so people can't get in and out of those. And it's just, a, it's a really bad idea from every perspective mm -hmm. I can think of. Right. And we know council needs to hear from community folks like you. Right. Um, and so our, you know, we're gonna really work to build that coalition from the ground up. Starting today, and I know we presented to the sunset bid on Tuesday, um, and we're really excited to be working with some folks from there as well. So if you'd like to just fill this out to begin with, um, we'll make sure to stay in touch with updates and as we do the canvas if we're in, when we're back in this neighborhood to stop by or give you a call or send you an email if there's if we can do any follow up. I will definitely emphasize the point that I think while most businesses, business owners agree that this is a, a big problem, but we have limited time and resources here, only a few months. We don't have that many cameras on the ground. We uh, can really use some help in just getting introductions to folks. You know, we have cameras out there, but it's a lot of times hard for them to actually get to visit on themselves. I'm sure so, uh, those of you who own businesses know when someone comes to your door and so talk to them. So if you can give us an email, introduction, anything, I will take it from there. We'll drop letters for folks, but I would really appreciate if you can help us with uh, getting access to your network because we really need those voices in uh, City Hall. I think the other thing to share with you guys is the other side who is proposing to legalize this, really the components of it, they're very well organized. Um, we've commissioned a common impact study. The study's going to show that if the city were to create a legalized funding framework, it would reap $47 million a year in new taxes. Um, there's a good, I think, micro enterprise business, you know, kind of getting folks out of poverty initiative. Um, so there is significant organizing that's already happened on the other side of the yeah. They've created a very sympathetic narrative to the public. And I think we have just as many compelling stories that we can share from, from entrepreneurs and folks who have built businesses playing by the rules from the ground up um, that we would like to share as well. Does, uh, does the ordinance call for these vendors if it is <coughs> uh, to be inspected by the health inspectors, such as brick and mortar? It does. It has, it has a county health um, inspection component to it, but I think right now there's nine county health inspectors for the entire county, and the report estimates that there's 50,000 of these vendors statewide that could be legalized. So thinking that enforcement is going to change from how it is now, just if it becomes legalized, it's kind of... Yeah. And if there's 50,000 now when it's illegal, right. when it's legalized... So, so I'm sorry. No, you're is the main drive of, that the proponents have is for taxes? Is that the main purpose for doing this? Or? I think the main drive that they're going towards are trying to legalize a network of folks who have businesses and are trying to work and make a living. So the big thing is talking about bringing people out of the shadows and letting them <coughs> legally. I think they're trying to build an area with sort of small, you know, small vendor versus big businesses. So you know, since all, uh, especially not what we can get. Um, if there's any local uh, sort of signature small business, that's a huge help because you know, obviously street vending hurts everyone. It hurts workers, it puts in you know, it uh, makes businesses cut jobs. So we just want to make sure we tell the story of uh, the young small businesses who are by this. So I think that I asked the question the other night at the Sunset Board that the city actually has a street vending district ordinance where you could actually create a street vending district if you wanted one for your neighborhood. And the first one was created around MacArthur Park. And so describe, because that ordinance still exists. So I don't understand why we have to do a citywide ordinance if you have the ability to create a street right. vending district if you want one. Yeah. And what happened yeah. with that street vending district ordinance? So the city created an ordinance in 1994 um, that impacted the district. 20% of the people who were in it have to sign a petition saying they want the district. Um, it happened in MacArthur Park. It operated for a few years. Um, the vendors were there. They were paying the fee. They were doing due diligence, being the good business operators. There was no enforcement. So all around the park, there were people who were vendors and they weren't playing by the rules. The folks who were in the park playing by the rules got frustrated and ultimately it stopped. So, you know, one of the things that 
I did write a letter in December when this first came up at City Council, and since we haven't <coughs> formally taken up a position yet, I um, basically said that we have concerns about activity on our sidewalks in general that are unenforced and unregulated, and that it would make more sense to allow a community to opt out of this ordinance, you know, they opt in with this with the district that was created in the 90s or opt out. And, because um, then Hollywood could decide do we want to be in this or not, you know, and likely it would be not. So I, I would like to get uh, a position today from the board so I can actively write a letter and, and testify. Um, and Marie, what do you think would be like, what's the most appropriate policy position to take? Because the ordinance may change over time. Yeah, I think we, I think right now we stay in opposition. And then as the ordinance changes and we get more detail, then we can kind of maybe say, all right, if the community can opt in, if communities have the ability to say if they don't want it, then we can start the I agree with that strategy. Okay. I mean, it's just. Yeah, I start, you, you think we start from the current proposal is a no-go. Right. And then you see where we can go from there. You know, so I think we want to be the strongest position to negotiate with whoever you have to negotiate. And I'm strong with that as you know, it's really shut up a lot of opposition. You know, it's come back to the part of the community. So you need a motion to <coughs> street vending ordinance. And, and are, is it just an, an opposition letter? Or are we going to actually put some points in there? And I think we'd have to have some argument as oh, to sure. why. And I think I could go back to the original letter I wrote because some right. just kind of go right. over again the behaviors we already have on the sidewalk that we're struggling. And I think we just came from meeting with um, Central City East near the Fashion District and the Flower District, and she brought up a good point. You know, when you're talking about increased crime on the streets with um, the homeless population and others that are aggressive panhandlers, they have, ca you know, they're just, it's, it's cash ready for taking sure. um, on the streets. And so I think there could be maybe an increased crime that comes with having an all cash business set up on the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, $47 million in new taxes. Everybody's going to pull out a big wad and of money out. Is that going to be um, the East <laughs> LA Community Corporation yeah. in conjunction with the right. It's, it's the LA Food Policy Council in partnership with the East LA Community Corporation. Okay. And they hired the amount of brown people. Mm -hmm. We just came out with a report today on the minimum wage and why it should be raised. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, thank you very much for um, yeah. you know, your thoughts and actually organizing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So we're looking for a motion. And if anybody wants to fill out the petition already, yeah. yeah. If you just want to hold on, feel free to email me my emails on the bottom, and I'm happy to. Uh, I'll, I'll pass these around my office. I'm looking for a motion, please. So moved. Okay. And um, any, any second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Any abstentions? Okay. Um, we are, do we not have an action item on B? Um, and I think Carrie did some, you know, she presented something in the Midwest Walk already when um, Captain Zerkley and Chief Beth was here. Go into street safety. Sure. I'll uh, kick things off, I guess. Sure. Sure. I was just going to switch the order quickly and um, note that last month we made a, a report on the Mobility Summit and we mentioned that we were planning to do a series of field trips to take stakeholders out to other communities to check out some um, you know, design interventions and projects that they implemented. Um, unfortunately, we did not get enough interest from folks to follow through with those field trips, so um, we have canceled them, but um, we're going to take this opportunity to kind of re-strategize and um, continue our education efforts through our streetscape committee, which Mark and I will be kicking off on the, the 26th of this month. So um, if anyone's interested in attending, we welcome you, of course, it's at 9.30 at our office. Um, and we are planning to have, uh, actually we've confirmed uh, Deborah Murphy from, um, she's the founder of LA Walk. She's going to kind of kick off um, our, our program of work discussion with a really uh, fascinating presentation that she gave at the CDA conference last week. So um, I think she'll help get get the community excited and um, get us thinking about the kind of uh, projects that we should be pursuing this year. So um, that's kind of my update. Uh, real quick, since I wasn't here at the, the last board meeting in February, but uh, I, I did uh, go to the Mobility Summit. It was extremely well. Good job, and that was probably the most 
pessimistic on the board here of doing some kind of changes on Hollywood Boulevard, but it, it did open my eyes up, and um, I'm open to, to hear what some ideas are. Please. Oh, I, I, I forget her name. Good. Oh, it's Lena Reynolds. Reynolds. Yeah. Uh, really, really did a good job of you know, demonstrating what her, you know, what she sees in the future of what can go on. So I'm all, I'm all ears now. Yeah, so I think that we can hopefully get a list of kind of compelling speakers to speak about these different opportunities. And um, I think the more we, we learn about it, the more excited we'll get. So uh, what's going to be your strategy? Thank you. Um, and the end is up. And this is about the party that we had last Friday um, with some of our stakeholders. Um, just want to give you, there's a lot here because you know, I'm not able to do anything. Um, David, um, Fido, Trish, um, Mike. Parkins, Karen Kent, who I think was really great. Uh, these are some of the same folks that I personally have not met. Um, Robert Church is you know, somebody that wants to become more engaged. It was great to see Don. He ain't not on the board anymore, but he wanted to participate. Um, and I think that was really, you know, what, what I, the takeaway is, you know, some, some of the issues that came about are either real issues that we all see. It's perceived issues that maybe it's particular to those people and we really do um, maybe have to communicate better to them and, and figure out a way or it's um, specific issues. But um, there are things that are there that I think this is getting us to think through and what we need to do to communicate better with our stakeholders. Um, and we categorize them into um, different different areas. One is for localized issues um, that are particular for one property owner but could take place in other areas throughout the day. So one of them is you know, the trees. You know, the, the trees actually um, maybe are overgrown and provide a, a, a place of, um, for congregation for people for you know, illegal parking in people's private property. Um, another one is area of things that we could do as a bid to facilitate communication. Um, and some are mid-block areas, just like Jimmy suggested. You know, how do we actually gather people together so they can create some um, unification in terms of tackling some of these issues? Some of them are things that we actually do, but the stakeholders don't know. And I think good ideas have already come out of that. And I know Carrie already you know, tackled some you know, with um, you know, the group, with the staff and be able to be a little bit more response to that. So I think from that, it's really much more of a fresh eyes approach. Um, you know, other things are, you know, do we want to be involved in advocating for um, some of the bigger issues um, that could be the policy issues, or is there something that we can work together? You know, Jimmy came in, and you know, when I met with him last night, he was talking about the myths mid block and some of the ideas and actually these are ideas that other people have spoken about. Maybe we pull them together and they work on marketing collaboratives and, and those are things that maybe Devin think you know if they, you could grab those people, but they will do it, but they just don't know how to reach each other. Um, so I think a lot is coming about. I think it, it's great for us to hear about it. Um, I think we're going to continue on. What we'd like to do is some of the take a look at these issues because some of them are things that the committees do have to um, discuss and figure out what those actions, action plans are and bring it back to the board because we can't just go out and, and Carrie has a lot of history behind you know, a lot of these things. And it's the same thing with what Jimmy was talking about parking. We have years of history about parking and maybe we resurrect it. Let's take a look. But I think these people need to hear what has been done and what's possible and maybe something may not be, but there could be some good ideas. And maybe we can dust off what we've done and, you know, take a fresh look at them. So if I can get each of you to take a look through here, especially to um, the committee chairs, and look and see which ones are in your area and look at it, especially um, Matthew, you were talking about what you're going to look at in terms of what your um, priorities will be. You know, if, if we can look at that too and, and put it on, on the list and then come back next week, I mean, I'm sorry, next month, 
um, because I do want to give that to the stakeholders and give them an update as to what we're going to be doing. Yeah. <coughs> I've always encouraged each president to uh, do this coffee idea. Monica was the first one who who uh, took the bait and should have been margaritas. Well, actually, I'm waiting for my payments. You know? <laughs> um, sir, are there anything on this list that actually sticks out that you want to discuss further? And I'd be glad to bring it back to the board next month. And if there's anything in particular, you know, bring it up and we can give you a little bit more background. Or feel free to call if you want to. I'm like, there's quite a few streetscape comments in here, so I'll, I'll look through this. Okay, certainly. Yeah, and, and I, I think you were right about uh, the importance of communicating to a lot of these stakeholders that, that you know, haven't heard, like Jimmy, who hasn't, you know, really probably assumes that we're, we haven't been trying to tackle a lot of these problems for a long time. Um, and, you know, and I'm not sure whether he's aware of it, you know, Tao is coming with all of their phenomenal concepts to Selma and Cahuenga. And those are, those are some of the, so in fact, I think a couple of the most successful restaurants, mm -hmm. literally number one and number two in, in the United States. And so there are wonderful restaurants that are coming and it has taken a long time and a lot of effort. And then a lot of the marketing and promotion, I mean, the, the, those, you know, uh, Joe's effort, Haynes and Company, and they've made a lot of progress in that, in that front. So to the extent that we can, now that we've got something to talk about, and we can communicate those, those positives to, to the rest of our stakeholders and viewers. And what's really great about these people is they want to be part of a solution to make things better. Right. And I think that's what we're, we're getting at. We want to encourage all of that. Um, so um, I think we're really fortunate to see it, but they want to be a part of it. Uh, and we also have a gentleman that came in that's uh, retired, but he also wants to help us to just you know, keep going on that. Great. So it was, I think it was um, positive even though there were a lot of issues discussed. Um, I think that the outcome was what we actually wanted to do, is to foster communication. Um, new business, Jim, you want to talk about um, potential office yeah. communication? Um, I know we're in a little behind back, if I can just get a few minutes of your time because this is pretty important. Um, if you can pull out in your packet, there's a sheet here. It's got a little spreadsheet table in the front. Um, so just quick background. Um, towards the end of last year, we were in discussions with the landlord at the TAP building. Um, we were under the impression that we were going to be allowed to stay in our current space. Our lease is expiring June of this year. Uh, June 30th is our last day in the TAP building as of right now. Um, and we were under the impression that we would be able to negotiate something to stay in our current space, and everything was good to go. Um, and we kind of, at that time, when Sarah was on the staff, and Devin and Carrie and I talked and joked around about, well, it would kind of be nice, actually, if we had to leave because we could maybe go somewhere in the mid -bid, which would be a great location for an office. Well, be careful what you wish for. Um, because uh, at the start of the new year, we were told that they have a prospective tenant that would like to lease the entire fourth floor of the town building, which would have, force us to leave, or at least move, at the end of our lease in, in June. So uh, during our due diligence, we reached out to John, who helped us in our search when we had to look for office space five or six years ago, and asked him to see if there was anything available within the district. We also reached out to owners in the area that we knew had vacant properties to see if there was anything that they had that they would like to lease. And um, we did have somebody who answered the call. Um, and so we, have put together here a list of what has come back, what are our current options. Uh, we are still keeping our, our ears to the ground, or our ears to the street to see if there's anything else out there. But what I have before you today is what we're proposing as what we think would be probably our best option going forward. And it is indeed in the mid boulevard, mid, mid bit as we call it. So the space is a 6562. Uh, it will be a three year and six month lease. And the reason for that is our, our bid is set to expire in December of 2018. So we would have an option to renew, of course, at the end of that, but um, we would have the lease through the end of our district or this current district. Uh, the space is 3,500 square feet. It's well below market at, at 171. It's about $6,000 in, in rent. And then we have an anticipated rent number there, which is just, what is that is, is it's including cams and utilities. We haven't had to pay utilities in the tap room, so we're accounting for that. And our current space is around 1784. So this is, this is double pretty much the space that we have. 
Um, I put in there a rent schedule that'll show you kind of where we're at. Um, you know, below that is just kind of the details. We have a LOI that we received from the landlord uh, for this space, and actually another space within that building. Um, and we are currently for this space, we're actually second in standing. Uh, there's a current offer on the table that they are negotiating, and uh, we should know by early next week whether or not that does go through. So if it does not go through, then we would of course move to first, and then. Uh, assuming that the board approves the motion today to allow us to uh, proceed with negotiating, we'd like to do that and see if we can get into the space by summer before lease expires. But um, on the second page, I just to show you, these are kind of the reasons why we're moving offices, and this is, I think, important. Um, there are two options we have been, and actually I just received an email while in this meeting from the tablet, there's now a third option they're proposing also smaller than our current space, it's about 1480 square feet at 325 that I just got an email on. But there's, so there's now three options in the TAP building we can consider, all of which are smaller than our current space. One is about equal to it, but it's at more rent. Um, those options are at the bottom of the page, and it's gonna put us over budget this year, calendar year, by about $8,600. Um, the other option, like I said, is within the same building, but it is currently occupied, and there's no guaranteed timeline as to when the tenant would <coughs> be leaving that space and so we would have to probably more than likely find a temporary office space to hold us over in the meantime. So again that's part of the reason why we're looking at this space as, as our, as our go-to. The other is that the location is already vacant. Um, it's the largest venue we've seen as I said as well below the market rate. Uh, one of the things that's great and I'm going to pass around some photos that we took of the space is uh, on this first page um, you'll see there's like a little side room here. This room actually goes back almost to the back of the property, and what we're hoping to turn that into is it's a meeting space or somewhere in the front of the, of the building and use that as an office. Um, and what that would allow us to do is kind of get out of this situation we're in right now where every month we're scrambling to find a meeting space that we can have our board meetings, committee meetings. We also would have community events there. We could potentially have mixers there or micro neighborhood mixers could be held in this space. So there's a lot of potential with uh, having that much room, and that's what we're actually really looking forward to. Um, some of the other things is that, it, as I said, it's in the mid-bid, which is, as we all know, an area of this district that is often overlooked. And uh, I think with us being there, it would really send a strong message to the bid community that we really do believe in the potential of this developing micro-neighborhood that's there. And uh, the other thing that we're excited about, Devin and I and Matthew were touring the space this week, is doing some type of uh, storefront, there's like display cases, Kind of having a space where residents, visitors, uh, potential investors can come by. Maybe we have a diagram or, or something of the district, and we can talk to them a little bit about what's happening in Hollywood, what's going on, and kind of almost showcase it as it's like a you know almost not a visitor center, but just like kind of a promotion center for Hollywood too. So there's, um, as you can tell, a lot of potential. I'm very excited about it. Uh, Carrie and I, the minute we walked in, it was like when you go house hunting and you're like, I want this house. And it was like, and we knew that this is where we want to be. As much as we love being in the tap building, um, I think to really be at the street level and be in that portion of the district would be a benefit for us. And I think for the board too, you know, having regular meetings there would also benefit us. So that's where we're at. Like I said, it's not a guarantee. Um, we should know by next week sometime, whether or not that we can proceed with negotiations for this space. But I think what we're looking for is just the go ahead with the board and under the kind of the leadership of the finance committee, which Monica is, I think, the lone representative of today, <laughs> um, under their kind of guise and, and their direction with the approval of the board, start to negotiate either for this space or something else that comes up within budget. So um, that's the options. I also included a rent schedule for the other spaces on the last page. I apologize for the, the rendering. The printer kind of came out a little sloppy, but if you're just curious to see how it breaks down, and I can answer any questions you have about that. What does it cost all in? Well, that's... It looks like there's a lot of TI in it. There's going to be a lot of TIs, and that's the part that we haven't figured out. We have about a $9,000, almost $10,000 surplus right now, so we obviously would put that towards TIs plus what we did when we moved into our space in the tap building uh, five or six years ago, whenever it was, it's, it's, I can't believe it's been that long, but uh, what we did was about 28 grand in TIs at that time, and what the board elected at that time was to take contingency money that we had extra and just pay the TIs up front. I think what we would probably do is come, we're, we're actually, the space planning is being covered by the landlord, so as soon as we know we can proceed with the negotiation, we'd like to sit down with that space planner, figure out the costs immediately, and then come back to the board probably, hopefully by next month, and say we're looking around this number for TIs. And like I said, put that time immediately towards it that we're saving. And then 
maybe take some of the contingency for it and, and go. We're looking at probably a more open concept in this to also keep our, our costs down. And then we, we recognize it's going to probably be a build as you go kind of thing. Is, you know, have, you, have you put like a, a TI dollar amount? Are you guesstimating it? I, I budgeted very low, um, but because the space is so large, I just to throw out a number, I put it at about 45000 in TIs, um, knowing that we've spent 28000 on our current space, and then plus the 10 on the top of that would actually put us closer to 60 in TIs. So we have contingency money right now, but that's, like I said, that's just, you know, it's not it's not anything to live by. So we'll, we'll get something more firm once we meet with the space planner. Like I said, let's pray and hope, and fingers crossed that, um, you know, this space will, will come into our... I, I would just... Yeah, yeah. Let's drop again. Yeah. I would just recommend that um, you have the work bid out um, by people who know what they're doing, because if you're going to be pulling a building permit for this, you know, it's the, the new Title 24 requirements. And, you know, you, we're seeing people spend five, seven, eight bucks a foot in just new lighting because of all the new, you know, all the floors and lighting stuff's just gone. Can't, can't, it's all, can't use any of that anymore. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the can of worms that gets open when you go in and pull a building permit is huge. I mean, it's bigger than it's been since I got into the business. And how long does it take now? Because it does take a while. It does take a while. Yeah, it'll take, you know, the, just to get a permit and build it out, it'll, it'll, it'll be, yeah. Easily. Easily. What did you say? I thought six because it seemed like six what? Just to, to build it out, but then you usually to get a get permit and plans and stuff it could be another six weeks. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Like right now, we're just finishing some rehab of when we're going to Wilshire, Vermont, and um, we're pulling multiple permits, and in some instances, it's two and a half months, and we're paying expedited fees to, right. to accelerate it. It's just the city of LA is there's a lot of building going on. So there's a bunch of different people yeah. that have to sign off on the, on the, on the way. Two and a half months to do what? Sorry. You pull, pull the permit to get the building permit from the city. Okay. For a project that you're doing. Yes. But well, would be similar. So we have tenant improvements in certain projects that we have. So it'd be similar because we have 22 retail tenants on one of the properties. Okay. So we. Yeah. I guess the only thing I'm saying is we should roll all of those costs in and, and, and yeah. average it out to see what the actual cost per square foot per year ends up being. So that we yeah. have something more concrete to, to, to decide. And then, and then the space planner hopefully will give you a good idea of how efficiently you could use that space. Because the only other concern I've got is that. You know, we're doubling our square footage, and, and I haven't seen you guys being stacked on top of each other. So, you know, if you can utilize the space and you think it's, you know, you can really use it, that's great. But yeah, and we envision a, a kind of an open office space kind of feel with with a big conference table. So there would be. I remember when I was touring in the chamber stuff. Um, Who's Bob? Cleveland, they had a like a like a marketing center for their bid in downtown Cleveland. You walked in and they had a diorama set up, you know, with all the buildings, kind of like our alley diorama with yeah. steroids. We could actually kind of see a bird's eye view. And I'd be so envious of that. But it could be a it could be a appealing, you know, looking in um, from the street where people could come and gather, even real estate brokers could come in and couches and, and whatnot so I love the idea of being in that location in the middle of the bid in store for week too I think yeah. it's cool. I think that's the, the what we're you know we we're not um, prima donnas you know we don't need to have um, glamorous space we we like the idea of being there in the, the last frontier and getting to know you know what exactly is the rhythm and pulse of that yes. stretch of the boulevard you know, even after hearing Second City come to the security committee and feeling frightened about confronting gang members, well, I'm ready to have that experience. You know, just, you know, this is, we've got to get this part figured out. And it, it's really cushy and comfy to be on top of a Starbucks and to walk to Trader Joe's for lunch. And it's like, that is super nice. And so we are willing to like abandon that. <laughs> so it seems as though the question here, in order to get and actually is John's question of actually give us getting a complete financial you know, comparison, including the capital improvements. 
which would be TIs in any position, and then then the secondary thing is, you know, where does that fall in space? Because I think it's a financial decision and any of the policy that comes to it. Well, the actual, this all hinges on the fourth floor being taken over, which is not necessarily a done deal, right? It's, it sounds like it's pretty much a done deal. They, it, we could be out tomorrow, they would want us out tomorrow. Yeah. They're, well, we, they're, have we, have, we have a lease. Yeah, we have, we're not, I mean, obviously, we're, we're holding the cards right now, but I'm just saying that we're we're feeling the pressure because um, we, we definitely got to find it. It's, it's not an option now. And as, as we kind of talked about, Carrie and I talked about too, we're, we are excited to do something different. We do want to be in this area. And if it's not this, then there are other options. And we're, we're trying not to be naive. We know that the TIs will be expensive. And um, you know we're going to have to put that up, up front and what, what we can use that space for. But I think, um, like I said, this is just a proposal. We can come back and do what's suggested. And, Look at it the action it item is not to bind the, the board in any way. It's just yeah. negotiated on binding it. There's nothing to bind. No, nothing, there's nothing to bind yet because there's not really even a guarantee that we can yeah. begin but, negotiating right. the space. But maybe we should talk to you, a potential landlord here. Yeah. 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 Let, me, let me speak a couple of quick comments. First of all, uh, yeah. you said the record screen is our building. <clears throat> and I can guarantee you that the air conditioner will not work as well. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, just to reiterate, um, I mean, the bid is second in line. Uh, there's another opportunity that we are committed to seeing to a decision. Um, and I agree very much with uh, John and Chad's comment about everything takes more time and time to get those things. And we know that we need to enter the ADA bathroom in the uh, space anyway, which, yeah, that's, that's going to be a permitted thing too. We're going to have to deal with that. Uh, um, do with the permitting and the architectural stuff on that anyway. Um, and the other thing that's, that's also possible um, is that we may choose to perhaps firm some of the additional TI and amortizing over the term periods too. So that's, that's something that you and I can talk about later if you guys move in the first position. So maybe what we should also do is figure out the timing in every scenario, because if if in the that this doesn't work out, we'd have to go to another decision anyway, because the time is running out. Yeah, and we need yeah. Well, Carrie and I talked about, um, and we've actually started. I started reaching out to some other. Like I said, I mean, we this decision that hasn't been made in back, and we reached out to other property owners. We reached out to other other you know landlords in this area, and I continue to also on the lines of if not a permanent space, then for a temporary space, because. Uh, we are feeling the reality that, as, as Chad was saying, that we know the building permits take a lot of time. We know even if they're very simple TIs, it's probably going to take longer than you know, it's like any time you do construction, right? It's always you know you add on a three months, right? and yeah. probably going to be four. Right. So so we are looking at all those options, and um, and like I said, I think the finance committee too often look at too. This is a larger space. How does that play out over time? So in terms of our budget, but. Um, I, I'm just saying we need to, as Monica said, we do need to move on this. So I think what we're looking for is more, not stamp this in stone, we're doing this and we're going to go ahead and go for it, but just to kind of go ahead from the board to start beginning these negotiations and start looking at We kind of need to know what our latitude is right. to operate. Um, I mean, I envisioning we're either going to be back at WeWork, we're going to be yep. working out of our houses, or we're going to be able to go right. into like open space on you know the tap building just with the you know, basic computers and our basic files until we can. We work to a good solution if it doesn't work, but I would encourage you to launch as many trains off at this, you know, on multiple yeah. different options because. Yeah, we are. Good. I think presence on the boulevard is extremely important. I think it sets the tone for the community. Um, it, it, it brings in a new day. Uh, I agree with you on the getting all the information possible, I, I, it, it has to happen. Uh, and I, as a person who wants construction, no, it is time and a half at the least. Um, my question would be, if this person, this this company or person says next week, oh gosh, no, it's not gonna work for us, then how long is how long do we have before we have to make a decision? Because if you're saying, well, you only have an extra week, well, then that puts us behind the eight ball versus if we know that we have three weeks because the board you know if you're having to have a board vote that's official versus saying yeah please negotiate versus no we need a decision that's a whole different discussion 
Yeah, we have some back. So there's another option within that within within the building there that is it's smaller and it's um, like I said that changes the timeline too because there's a tenant in there right now. So no, but I'm talking about just negotiating the deal. I'm talking about this. When you're gonna have to sign. I'm talking about the deal that you're wanting. So yeah. it'll be after the next board meeting. Yeah, right? so they so we have time. We have time. time. We have time. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they can't. Like, Sorry, I misunderstood. Yeah, we have time. Well, I'll, I'll make the motion. Do we need a motion? It was an action item, so I don't know. I don't know why you would. Yeah. I don't think we have a motion. Yeah. I always have to put a motion here because, you know, you can't take an action without a motion, so I usually put motions as placeholders. So okay. you didn't know if we were going to have something ready to rock and roll or not. I think what you're getting is feedback, which is if we all freaked out, that would be that an indicator to say we can't important. go down that road. Right. 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 I would like to offer. Joe, if you want, to talk about some of the other possible items you might see, like soft costs, ADA lines, so just so that you, you cover it, mm -hmm. and I can share some documents with you that could be a good template for you. That'd be great. So that you don't miss any. So we don't miss any. I would love that. Thank you. So forward to hearing more, and I need to make sure that we're working so hard on that. So yeah, and I do want to point out that. This has kind of now created a bit of a new demand on our staff, which we did not anticipate. Um, so, you know, and especially if we find ourselves moving once or twice, um, I know our productivity dropped 30% when we were at WeWork, and I um, just want to be cognizant of that because there's a lot of things, um, you know, on the horizon. And I'll keep you close on that next time. Thanks. Thanks for time. Okay, um, can we talk about FDC today? Yeah, so um, last week we were at the California Downtown Association and we heard about a, a brand new bill that's been introduced, um, SB 608. There's a fact sheet here. Uh, this is kind of like a resurrection of a bill that we took a position on um, a couple years ago, which was Assembly Bill 5, the Homeless um, Bill of Rights. And now this has been rebranded and recrafted. Um, Matthew actually did a little side by side comparison um, to call it the Right to Rest Act. And um, it is essentially um, going to make it fairly easy for people to lay out on our public right of way for almost any reason. And the bill specifically. Um, and this, this happened the first time around, precludes agents of a business improvement district from, um, uh, in their words, harassing uh, uh, people who are resting in the public right of way. Um, this, we have a conference call scheduled next week with a number of PIDs from throughout the state who are concerned about this. Um, I, uh, there's an editorial here that's in the LA Times. Um, Mark Ryback is actually on the Venice Community, um, what do you call it, New York Council. Uh, and we're concerned about in Venice, that's the article we we'll look at. And there's a letter that I had written two years ago um, to the Assembly Judiciary Committee when we had taken an official position to oppose the Homeless Bill of Rights, which was ultimately defeated. <coughs> But, that was a good letter. Thank you. Uh, but they have taken a lot of those kind of previous objectionable dimensions out of the assembly bill, and um, you can see from what Matthew did here, a lot right. of that stuff is missing. But now there's a whole bunch of new stuff, which I'm not too sure what what the implications are of amending the penal code, um, which will turn a number of these activities into misdemeanors. I thought it was interesting, uh, page six, a person who lodges in any building, structure, vehicle, or place with the permission of the owner or person entitled to possession or control of it, that is a misdemeanor for squatting, it looks like. Uh, so if you're in a property or in a car that doesn't belong to you, it would be a misdemeanor. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with this. Well, I do. Um, it's, it's, it's the same place that we, we began and finished with the last bill. You know, I mean, it, it, the, the, the reality is the LAPD or the space patrol, nobody is, is going to ask anybody to move who's just resting for a couple of minutes because they need to rest. This is just another vehicle to, 
you know, allow it, you know, permanent to facilitate to, you know, to live on, on the sidewalk. And, and, you know, the best part about your letter you wrote before was, you know, that, that's, that's the direction, that, that's the opposite direction of where really the authorities on homelessness are, are telling us that we should go. You know, and permanently ending homelessness is the solution. And and uh, facilitating, uh, you know, living on, on the sidewalk is, is not, it doesn't happen. And I believe they have to board action to cycle in the game on its own. Thank you. 